Hi and welcome back. Now yesterday I already recorded the video that you're going to see following this on using the fader port with waveform. I wanted to put a little preface to this that I don't recommend that you go out and buy a fader port for use with waveform. The implementation is for Cubase and so the support we have is sort of random. Basically, I'm going to show what it does. You do get basic transport controls, you get solo mute, you can do kind of a shuttle control with this or zooming with this, and then you have the fader. Panning doesn't work, and most of the other features here either don't work or they work in very unpredictable ways. So if you do have a fader port 2 like this and you're using other software like Ableton Live, or Studio One where it works very well. If you already have one, then I wanted to document how it works because the questions come up repeatedly in the various forums or to me about how do you get this to work. Part of that is because the original fader port just never worked with traction or with waveform. This sort of works with waveform using the MCU mode. And I'm gonna show you how it works now to document it for anybody else who wants to try this and also to remind myself what it does later once I've forgotten. So with that said, here's today's video. Hi and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure and use the Personas Fader Port 2 with Waveform version 11. Now, Fader Port was updated in 2018 to this version two. Now the original version of the fader port never worked very well with traction or with waveform, but the newer version, version two of the fader port, supports the MCU protocol and does work a lot better. Now it's not designed to work with waveform, but it does support several DAWs using various flavors of the MCU protocol. So I'm gonna show you how to set it up for the best operation with waveform. Now to get started with this, Connect your fader port and get it ready to go and then download the universal control program from Presonus. Once you've got this installed, you should see your fader port detected in this program. You'll also wanna make sure that you check universal control to see if it has updates. And in my case, my version is up to date. As it updates, it may come up with firmware upgrades for the fader port, which you would want to install at this point. With that set up and ready to go, we need to reprogram the fader port to come up in the correct MCU mode. We do that by first turning off the fader port, hold down next, and then press the on button to let it power up. Once it powers up, these five buttons are flashing solo mute arm, bypass and touch. Now bypass is the one for the Cubase version of MCU. Now if I press the bypass button, it's going to put it into the mode that will work best with waveform. If you want to go back to the version for Studio One, then you turn this off, hold down next, press the button. When it comes up blinking, you would press solo to go back into that mode. These other buttons are for different personalities. For example, the mute button is for Apple Logic, and then the arm button is the one for Ableton Live. If we press touch, then that would be the mode for Pro Tools. But anyway, we're gonna press bypass to put it in the mode that we need for use with waveform. Now go back to the settings tab under MIDI devices, just make sure that the Personas FP2 shows up as an output and an input device. Then click on the Control Surfaces page and under Mackie Control Universal, you'll see it's not assigned to any device. At the bottom, you can assign this to the fader port. So FP2, assign the output to Personas FP2. And this is pretty much all you need to do. If you power up, and you have it set this way, then we should start to see our basic controls that you can get from this device. So let's test play. So I'll hit the play button. You can see playback starts.
When I press it again, play pauses. I'll press it again. Play starts. The stop button rewinds to the beginning. Now I have this control here, which turns the loop on and off in Studio One, but here it turns the metronome click on and off. You can see if I touch that down here at the bottom, notice that the metronome is lighting up and going off. Now these buttons are for the transport. It will move your transport forward and backwards. It does accelerate pretty well, but it is nice if you've got a plug-in open or another program open and you want to move these things around. In Studio One, if you press both of these together, it functions as, as RTZ, but that does not work in this case. Record, if you hit it on its own, it doesn't do anything, but if you do have a track armed, so on track 12, I've got my vocal mic hooked up here to this input. If I turn this on, hold down the record button while I hit play, now you'll see that I am recording audio. And then press either play or the stop button to get out of that mode. So those are the basic transport capabilities. Now we have the big fader here, which is motorized. I'm going to press M to go into my console view here. If I press or select any of these channels, you can see that it controls it. These are on a group, which is why that's happening that way. And as I click on a channel, you'll see that the fader adjusts. If I adjust the fader in the software, then it's motorized and it moves, which is pretty cool. If I touch it and move it, you'll see that it also moves. Now in most software, this function, when you press pan, will control panning. This capability does not appear to work for me in the software. So let's take a look at the top row here of some of our channel controls. We've got the solo, which does work fine. That works on the selected channel or track. If I select the kick track, I can solo it. I can also click mute, which mutes the selected channel. These two channels are in a group, which I'll go to the group tab here and disable that group for now. So I've got mute, solo, those all work. Arm does not work. We also have these other things related to automation that do not appear to work. Now previous and next do appear to work it by jumping in steps of the time increment, like that. The knob here also works as a type of a transport shuttle. It's not super smooth, but it does work. Now you'll see undo and redo. These work very weirdly on here, so I would leave those alone. So the link, pan, and channel buttons work strangely or don't work at all. So with the scroll button illuminated blue like this, it works as a type of a shuttle. And then the previous button and the next button nudge the cursor along at, on the grid increments. If you hold it down, it doesn't do anything. It's not like the ones on the transport that do the same thing, but the, if you hold it down, they have a like a key repeat type of a function. If you hold on shift and then press the scroll and it illuminates white, then it operates as a zoom. Right, it appears to be in this version of waveform with the edit cursor that it, it will zoom to the edit cursor, which is really kind of a nice feature. All right, so the master and the click buttons do not operate as you'd expect, but they do do something kind of useful. The master button, let me close the mixer so we have the track small. The master button will zoom in, or basically zoom in vertically like this, so that all the tracks fit on the screen. And the click button is your normal zoom to the extent of the project like this. So this is zooming in horizontally and zooming in vertically. If I repeatedly press them, they don't do anything else. 
The section and the marker button do not appear to do anything. The user buttons that are below here are supposed to be programmable. I have not found that to be the case with this device. So we have some basic functionality. We have our fader that you can use to do fades, kind of nice. It is motorized, that's all tracking properly. We have start stop and the record enable, some transport functions. This enables the click, which is also very helpful. We have solo and mute, which is great. The arm does not work on this. We also have the ability to use this as a basic shuttle control, or if you do shift scroll, then it works as a zoom. The Fader Port 2 is a great device. It's clearly not optimized for waveform, but I wanted to show it to you because if you have one, because you're using it with other software, I have found it useful enough that I use it every day, mostly for these controls right here. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.